Now, since you guys have some basic understanding of functions, basic understanding of calling, um, passing values, accepting values, pointers and all that, we can get into something a little bit different. Now, recursion is basically the act of a function calling itself. This does seem a little weird, but it's actually really useful when you're dealing with um, stuff such as factorials, which I'm going to teach you guys right now. Now, what a factorial is, is you start off with the numbers, so just say you have 7, and the factorial 7 is basically 7 multiplied by 7 minus 1. Now, for argument's sake, let's make n equal to 7. And then we can illustrate it as n times n minus 1. Okay. So what this is going to do is we're going to call the factorial function. We're going to send an n, right? And the factorial is equal to that n value multiplied by that n value minus 1. So we have factorial is equal to 7 times 6. The next time we call the function is equal to, factorial is equal to 6 times 5. And then we just go down the line, we go 5 times 4, 4 times 3, etc, 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 until we get uh, to 0, which is the base case. Now, recursion will run into the base case is called, or the base case is found. Um, in this case, it'll be 0 because that's that's going to be the condition in our for loop when we do all this adding. Now, when we're doing factorials equal to 7 plus 6, we're actually um, adding 6 times 5 with the value of this, and then adding 5 times 4 with the value of this um, plus this, and then this with the value of this plus this plus this. So it's a, it's a sum. It's more of a sum. Okay, we're not resetting the factorial each time. So basically, that's what it is, okay? Um, the only really efficient way of doing this is to use recursion. Like, how else would you possibly do this without a lot of strain? Um, you'd have to do a lot of straining code to illustrate this without recursion, right? And this is just this is just an example. It's just a math example. Okay, you can have plenty of examples such as video games, um, 3D composition, um, pixelation, all types of stuff in the 3D video games. They all use recursion. So first off, let's code this factorial function, okay? Because you guys are probably wondering, how the hell do I do this? So first off, what we're going to do is we're going to define the factorial function, okay? Um, let's call it infactorial. And this factorial function will accept an one value, and it'll accept an integer, which is our initial n value, okay? So now we have to define our base case, okay? When we're trying to calculate the factorial, the result should be 1 initially. Because when we say that we want to return 1 to a function, we're saying that the function ran true. 1 is usually equal to true, 0 is equal to false. That's why we have int main initially, okay? Because uh, when we want to end the program, we return 0 to the compiler, and it says, okay, the program's run, I'm finished with it, so I'm going to exit, so we return 0. It's, it works the same way with the factorial in its base case. The base case of the main is zero. Just for example, it's not really it's not recursion by any means, but you're actually returning something to the interpreter, saying that okay, zero, I'm done with it. This is false. Um, the program's not running anymore, so let's end this. Let's finish it off, and so we return zero. Uh, with factorials, you need a base case. Okay, you, the program needs to know when to stop, or else you'd run into an infinite loop and it'd just keep running. The way factorials work is you're going to keep running it until n is equal to 0. So n will start off at 7, it will minus 1 every time um, the factorial is looped or the function is called again until it equals a 0. So let's code this function. Okay, so we'll grab it over here, we'll copy this, we'll paste that right there, and we'll start coding it. So we'll make an if statement inside of this case. So we'll do if n is equal to 0. And this is interesting because we're actually putting the return statement within an if function. Now, why would you do this? <laughs> okay, you do this because what you want to do is you only want to terminate this function when the base case is met. Okay, to terminate the function, you'll return zero. Now, what's different uh, than the main function is once the base case is eventually met, 
you're going to want to return 1 instead of 0. That's going to basically say it ran successful. Okay. Now we're going to do that part where we calculate the actual factorial. So factorial is equal to, now here's the recursion part, the really amazing stuff. What we're going to actually do is we are going to return n times the factorial of n minus 1. Now, I'll give you a second to absorb this stuff right here. What are we doing right here? This is what we're doing. First off, we're testing if the base case is 0. Okay. If the base case is 0, we're going to return true, which is 1. Okay. And that's going to basically exit out of this factorial only when um, the base case is true. Now, when you return something in a function, it eventually exits the function once uh, the return value is stated. Now, the return value is stated only when the base case is met. Therefore, the base case is not met, right? If it's not met, which we're sending right here into n, right? If it's not met, what we're going to do is we're going to return n times the factorial, so we're going to call the function again, and then we're going to subtract 1 from the n value. So it's going to keep repeating itself until n is equal to 0. It doesn't exit the function right here. It does not exit the function. It actually goes deeper into the function and it calls itself again. So what will happen is we never return back to the main function. If we call factorial and we send in like 5 or something like that, what the compiler is going to do is it's going to send 5 into this integer and it's going to store it inside of n. It's going to test if 5 is equal to 0. It's not, so therefore it's never going to exit. It's going to go to the next line, which in fact is a call to itself inside of itself. So it's going to call factorial. It's going to send 5 minus 1, which is 4. 4 is going to go right here, so int n is equal to 4. If 4 is equal to 0, return 1, which is not true. Therefore, it's going to return 4 minus 1, 3. So 3 goes in. It's like an never ending loop. Well it is an ending loop. It ends when the base case is met, which in this case is zero. One thing that's similar to all recursion programs is the base case is usually the same for most programs. And they all have the same functionality. Once the base case is met, we return one. So as I said, once you get that three inside of there, it'll test if it's zero. No, not true. So therefore it's going to return three minus one. You have two here. Two is not equal to zero, therefore blah blah blah, it goes to 1, 1 is not equal to 0, therefore it's going to return n times the factorial of n minus 1, but then once 0 hits, it's equal to 0, therefore it's going to return 1. Now let's try to run this program, let's see what it gives us. So as you see when you output this, we're going to see out factorial of 5, and as you see we get 120. This is probably one of the easiest <laughs> possible recursion examples because it's so easy to like visualize, it's so easy to see why you do it, um, why it's useful, but as you dig deeper, as you get into something more complex, such as, such as like, I don't know, like graphics or whatnot, stuff becomes really tough, and uh, I'm not there yet at all, so like if you have questions about that, I'm not the proper person to ask about recursion. I know the basics of recursion, I can help you with uh, basic type of stuff, but um, initially it is a pretty complex um, concept to grasp in that you, uh, you're you not really expecting such a huge number of 120 because if you look at it, you're not creating any variables to return, like you're not creating a variable to store that factorial, all you're doing is you're calling it and you're returning itself times the call of the function with the n value minus 1. So it's really tough to, it is tough to grasp. You have to probably review this a few times. Um, do it yourself. Play around with the numbers, you know. Um, see out everything. Like, if you were to see out, like, factorial right here, if you were to see out n right there, like, do some testing. You know, do some testing. 
call it again and then see out fact. Yeah, so might want to do it. So play around with it, right? See five, four, three, two, one. You might ask, how the hell does it store that value? Well, the return statement acts as a variable which stores all those values, which adds or multiplies five with four, and then four with three, three with two, two with one. It is tough. It is tough to understand, but um, and some may ask, if you're returning one, why doesn't it output one? The answer to that is, you have to think of it as a boolean. Because if it was just a normal function, we would return, if we were to return one in a normal function, we'd simply get one. But in this case, we're getting into a recursive type of mode. Okay, we're getting to a recursive mode where once it gets into it, it's got to get out of it. So that's just a very light brush on recursion, guys. You might have to read up on it, get more familiarized with it, try your own examples, um, you know, try to figure out how to do this without recursion. I did hint to it in this video, how to do it without recursion. Try to do it, you know, try to understand why this works. You can try this with character strings if you wanted to. Make sure to have a base case and make sure that you eventually will reach that base case or else you're going to start infinitely calling that function. It's going to turn into some messy code later on or some messy output later on. But if you have any further questions regarding any C++ topics, within reason, just send me an email. This was off some guy that messaged me about this. So just send me some emails if you guys have any questions and it pertains to what I teach. I can help you guys with it. I might actually do another recursion example in the future, so stay tuned for that. But as long as you guys get the idea, the main idea for it and its use, um, you guys should be pretty good on this. You don't come across it too much, but as you get to more complex stuff, it'll be helpful for you guys, so thanks for watching.